Hi, Colin Bell here with Team Align, and today we're going to go over the build procedure of the T-Rex 450L Dominator DFC. This kit is completely different from the previous 450, and that is very similar to a 700E DFC, just on a much smaller scale. We've got the motor mounted at the top of the frame set now, our battery slides on a tray into the carbon frame set from the bottom, and there's a lot of plastic molded into the frame from the factory, just to make parts and pieces fit together very easy. What comes with the kit, what you'll find included in the box, obviously, is your helicopter airframe, your three cyclic servos, your tear order specific servo along with your 3GX fly barless unit, and your dominator motor and speed control combination, as well as a set of aligned blades. Before we open the box and go through the actual build procedure of the helicopter, I'd like to outline some of the features. So after we do that, we're going to open the box, check out the contents, and then follow the manual step by step. Like I mentioned earlier, the T-Rex 450L has several different features when compared to the previous model. The most predominant being the sliding battery tray. This is very similar to the 700 series, where you slide the tray in and you hear it lock by the latch that's mounted on the speed control mount. All you have to do to release the mount is pull up on the latch, pull the tray out where your battery would be attached. So it's very simple to swap out batteries. The motor's mounted on the top of the frame set, raising the CG, much like the 700. You can see here a miniaturized version of the frame stiffener, also seen on the 700. We've got a direct servo to swash plate connection here. A helical cut gear system. There are several plastic pieces that are molded into the carbon fiber frame that help capture the tear rotor case and the rear servo mount here, along with the anti-rotation bracket and the canopy mounting posts. If we move back to the tear rotor, you'll see that we've got something that's very similar to what's on the 700. It's a fully bearing supported tear rotor idler control setup. It's silky smooth, very slot free. These tear rotor grips have two radial bearings and one thrust bearing, again just like the 700. You'll also notice that the carbon fiber tail fin is now reinforced on the outside edge with a plastic molded piece. What's also new on this in comparison to the other 450 is the tear rotor boom support bridge that's going to stiffen things up quite a bit. So with all these features, I'd like to take a minute and compare the 700 DFC to this 450 LDFC, just so you can see how much the 700 design has influenced this very successful 450. If you're familiar with the line kits, nothing here is going to surprise you. It's the same packaging that's throughout the 250 all the way up to the 700 and 800 size helicopters. However, if this is your first Align helicopter, this is what you'll notice when you open the box. First and foremost is your instruction manual. That's included with the helicopter as a paper copy to ensure that you do the proper assembly. So it's very important that you follow this step by step. Within the main box, you'll find three smaller boxes which are number one, labeled your main blades, which are going to include, of course, your main blades, your tail boom, torque tube, and your boom support assembly, along with the tear rotor control guide. The second box over here to your right is your electronic device box, which includes your three cyclic servos, your single tear rotor servo, along with the 3GX fly barless unit, and your motor and speed control. The largest and final box is your frame set, which, of course, as it says, includes your frame set, your canopy, skids, main rotor head assembly, and tail rotor assembly. So with that said, we're going to open up the instruction manual, follow it step by step, and proceed with the build of this Align T-Rex 450L DFC. As outlined in the instruction manual, step one is to assemble the rotor head. This is how it comes out of the box. It is pre-assembled, but it's all put together loosely. So you're still required to take it apart, check the thrust bearings for grease, apply Loctite to all the bolts, and then reassemble it. So I'm gonna move forward. We're gonna disassemble it, clean everything up, 
put Loctite on the bolts and reassemble it, and you can watch step by step the procedure of how it's done. With our rotor head complete, we can move forward and assemble the swash plate balls to the swash plate, once again using a very little bit of Loctite. Once that's complete, we'll need to slide the swash plate over our main shaft and then install the rotor head over top of that. Now we can assemble the swash plate and the main rotor head onto the main shaft. As you can see, the main shaft has a line 450 DFC etched into the bottom part of the shaft. So you need to make sure that you slide the swash plate over the top half first followed by the main rotor head and then you're going to install your two pinch bolts into the rotor hub here on the bottom and your main through bolt with the nut right here. Now you're ready to start assembling your main frame. It's a little bit difficult with the stop motion picture to outline all the features of the frame set so I've gone ahead and assembled half the frame and now we're going to review what this actually entails. So you've got your two bearing blocks. You need to make sure that each bearing block is installed with the bearing pointing away from the frame. So this one is going to go in from the top, that one's going to go in from the bottom. You can see just like the larger 700, this has an identical frame brace around the motor mount to stiffen the frame up quite a bit. As you can see, there's all these plastic pieces that are molded into the carbon fiber frame, which is unique to a line. It's going to capture your anti-rotation bracket and your tail boom transmission case here in the rear of the frame set. So now with that said, I'm going to install the second half of the frame. We need to place it on something square before we tighten up all the bolts. And then after that, we'll move on to the next step as outlined in the main. Here's a mainframe assembly, which is almost complete. We have our two bearing blocks installed here, which also double as our servo mounting locations. We have a receiver platform mounted back here. Our 3GX fly barless system platform underneath here. Don't forget to install those two platforms into one half of the frame before you bolt the other half together. Otherwise, you won't be able to spread them apart and snap them in place. Um, we've got the frame stiffener here, our plastic piece, which is going to allow us to slide our battery tray in and out, and finally, our battery tray lock and ESC mount. That's going to push into the front of the frame like that, mount with your four screws, and as you can see right here, we've got the pull to release battery sliding tray lock. Now you can assemble the carbon fiber base plate to the skids along with the frame mounting brackets, which are three aluminum brackets that snap into the base plate and the base plate snaps into these landing gear. It's actually a really cool little system how everything fits together. So you're going to install the base plate to the skids, push these three aluminum pieces down into the carbon base plate, flip it upside down, and then install your three screws. The next step is to mount your three included cyclic servos. They're going to be mounted into the frame with the output shaft facing up. So I'm going to move forward, slide them into the frame, screw them down with the mounting hardware, and then we'll talk about temporarily putting the servo horns on. Before you install your two forward aileron cyclic servos, I suggest taking a little bit of clear scotch tape, wrapping it around the body of the servo so that the wire is taped to the bottom case. That's going to ensure that the wire never interferes or rubs against the main shaft. Once I put this in the helicopter, we'll do a view from the back showing you that it's going to clear all the components. Here's a clear view of why we want to tape the two forward cyclic servo wires. As you can see right here, they're pointed toward the back of the servo and they're never ever going to interfere with the main shaft. Now you can install the control walls onto the servo control arms. As you can see, each control arm has two holes. One is further away from the output shaft than the other. We're going to use the inner hole for 3GX purposes. You'll also notice that two of the servo horns, which are going to go on our forward aileron servos, have the control balls mounted on the inside. Your apt elevator servo will have the control ball mounted on the outside. You can go ahead and temporarily pop those on, but at a later step we're going to sub-trim all the servos and make sure they're centered. Now that your frame halves are together, you can mount the motor to the motor mount. The motor mount is directional. 
it's actually thinner on one side than the other uh, in relation to the mounting holes. So if you get it upside down, your motor's going to sit too high up and your pinion won't make proper contact with the main gear. So keep in mind this beveled edge right here is going to be the face that the motor mounts to. All you have to do is place the motor down, locate your two mounting holes, and then install the screws. I'm going to have mine set so that the wires of the motor are going to exit at the forward right hand part of the motor mount so that they'll connect up nicely with the speed control wires and be hidden in between the frames. For now it's best to leave the pinion loose on the motor shaft, but we still want to have it temporarily installed. So you have to locate the flat spot on your motor shaft and then line the set screw up with it. Position the screw just over the flat spot and tighten the set screw just until you feel it start to bite on the flat spot. That's going to let you know that you've got it in the right position. You want to have still a little bit of in and out play indicating that the set screw is not completely tight, but you shouldn't be able to pull the pinion right off the shaft. We'll set the height of that later once we get the motor and the main gear both installed into the helicopter. Now that you've inspected the tear rotor hub and grip assembly for grease and the thrust bearings, we can go ahead and inspect all the bolts in this idler control setup for Loctite as well. All you have to do is remove each bolt individually and then reinstall it checking for Loctite. Mine were all Loctited well from the factory, but you still have to check regardless. Since I've done that, we're now ready to install the hub and grip assembly back onto the tear rotor shaft, followed by the pitch control horns. While you're inspecting these bolts for Loctite, I recommend you do them one by one individually. If you do take the whole assembly apart and have all the components in your hand, you may be fumbling with all the small bearings and the few small components to get it all back together. So it's just easier, in my opinion, to take each bolt out individually, check for Loctite, and then reinstall. Now I'm going to prep the torque tube for installation into the tail boom. The first thing that I did was glued the hanger bearing onto the torque tube somewhere just off of center. You don't want to have it exactly dead center in the torque tube because you may set up a vibration. After you've got that done, you want to slide the rubber bearing holder over the bearing and then coat it in a little bit of WD-40 or something similar just so it's slippery enough to slide in easily to the tail boom. Now you're ready to install your rear tail rotor case onto the tail boom followed by your anti-rotation bracket and the tail fin. You need to make sure that the round index hole in your tail rotor case lines up with the round index hole in your tail boom so that the anti-rotation bracket can slide in through both of those and lock the case to the tail boom so it doesn't rotate. After that you're going to install your carbon fiber plastic reinforced tail fin over top to bolt it all together. With the tail case installed onto the boom, we can loosely install our tail fin and tail boom support clamp, our boom support bridge, the tail fin, and our boom supports. You want to leave everything loose enough so that you can slide it in and out when it comes time to install the tail boom into the helicopter. Before you install the tail boom into the back half of the helicopter, you should make sure that you have both your tail rotor guides on the tail boom loosely. If you don't do this now, you'll have to remove the tail rotor case to put them on later. As you slide the tail boom into the tail rotor case, you need to make sure that the index notch on the tail boom lines up with the index notch that's inside the plastic tail case. So gently push the tail boom into the case, wiggling it back and forth until you feel the notch line up, and then slowly rotate the tail rotor as you push the boom in the rest of the way. That's going to ensure that the drive splines of your torque tube are lining up with the spline in the plastic gear. Once that's all the way in, we can install the boom supports. Previously, we've left our tail boom clamp loose to give us the opportunity to move this forward and backwards. So all you have to do is slide that up forward, line the boom support holes up with the skid holes in the lower part of the frame, and install your screws. Then we're going to go ahead and install the four clamp up screws for the tail rotor case to squeeze everything together and do the final install of the tail boom. The boom support bridge included with this kit is directional. The boom supports when bolted to the helicopter have a wider spacing at the frame set than they do at the aft boom clamp that supports the horizontal fin. So a line has made this directional as well. As you can see there's a raised ridge here around the plastic that the through bolt goes through to clamp the two halves. 
All you have to do is make sure that the angle of this ridge matches the angle of the boom supports, being that the space in the back is smaller than the space in the front. Now you can install the tail rotor servo into the plastic tail rotor servo mount and then install this mount into the frame. The servo is going to be attached to the servo mount with the four included self-tapping screws and washers that you can see here. Now you're ready to install your tail rotor control rod. You need the plastic link on one end and it removed or not installed yet on the other end. Simply slide the rod through the two tear rotor control rod guides. And then to lock the guide onto the tail boom, all you'll do is take the included zip ties, slide it through the top of the guide, line them both up and then cut either end off with an exacto blade and that gives you the opportunity to reuse the guides if you ever crash the helicopter opposed to having them glued on permanently now that the mainframe is complete we can install our complete rotor head assembly and the pre-assembled main drive gear and tail rotor drive gear first you'll need the included main shaft shim which you'll slide over the bottom of the main shaft until it touches the machine lip on the top of the main shaft then you'll slide this main shaft through the helicopter, down and through the main gear, and install your lower bolt. If there's any up and down free play on the main shaft between the bearing blocks, you'll have to disassemble what we just did, add one more of these shims, and then reassemble it once again. Now you can assemble your three cyclic control rods, which simply consists of a metal center rod and two plastic rod ends. The manual specifies a length of metal showing of 10.5 millimeters once these plastic ends are screwed onto the rod. It's very important that all of them be the exact same length so we can maintain a perfect mechanical geometry. Later on, we'll level the swash plate using a swash plate leveling tool and a 3GX. Your finished product should look something like this. That concludes part one of our two part build video. This was the mechanical aspect of it. The second part will go through the 3GX setup and initial test flight and tuning. As you can see the model went together very well and very quick and I hope you enjoyed the video.